someone from the future came into this society right now, one of the things that they would see is that on the one hand, we have these fashion models walking down a runway that were paying $30,000 a week. And on the other hand, we have these girls, same height, same weight, with anorexia nervosa, and we hospitalize them. I think the people from the future would say, what was going on in a culture where this could be happening at the same time? Eating disorders are just the extreme version of what's happening to women, and increasingly men, in this society with the cultural emphasis on appearance and thinness. It's idealized in this society to be able to control your food, to be able to control your intake, to be able to have control over your body. So the individuals who are able to take that to an extreme, for an example, I think in some ways, rather than being pathologized, we have to look at them as the, what I call the canaries in the coal mine. When the miners used to take canaries in a cage down into the coal mines, if the canaries died, it meant it's a toxic environment, so we all have to get out of here. Well, those canaries were just maybe the more, more sensitive, you know, they had more sensitive constitutions, so they went down first. But it told the miners that this is not a good environment. And in some ways, I think people who develop eating disorders are our cultural canaries in the coal mine. They're the ones who are most susceptible to what's happening in a society where what you look like is more important than who you are. I think it is a toxic environment, and I think we all eventually are gonna be affected by it. Young girls get the message not only from the media, but from their own family that I'm more lovable if I'm thinner. I remember from a very young age, like I wasn't allowed to wear two-piece bathing suits because I needed to work on my stomach. That behavior is learned, that scrutiny, that comparison, that you're fatter and thinner. Da, da, da. And we learn that as humans and we gotta work to unlearn it. You read the magazines and what you're doing when you read those magazines is, how am I gonna fit in? How am I gonna be okay? How am I gonna be acceptable? What do I have to wear? What do I have to look like? What products do I have to use? But I would go and I would sit for hours in coffee shops, just flicking through these magazines. And I basically was just sitting there brainwashing myself, like getting myself into a deeper, deeper hole, like diets and... Early on, I recognized that, that weight loss was paired with attractiveness. Like, I, I couldn't look at the cover of, of any magazine from the age of 12 onward without seeing articles about sex and losing weight and those together and being sexy and being attractive. Well, and I felt like like I had to lose weight to be attractive and that my worth was tied to my physical appearance. And so that definitely led to an eating disorder for me. Thinness has been overly stressed as really it doesn't matter how attractive your eyes are, your skin is, your hair is, if you're not thin, you're not really considered attractive. And thin women have an elevated status, particularly in westernized cultures. I watch TV, which obviously was bombarding me with more images of models and, um, and really thin girls because I was really drawn to those things. It, it was like thin inspiration for me. It made me want to go thinner and get thinner and it was, I was just constantly comparing myself to those girls and thinking if I could only be thinner. And at that point I was so sick, like I couldn't get any thinner. I, I was skin and bones, so it was, it was, um, it was craziness, it was madness. There's and this very interesting study about the media's effect on young girls and its relationship to eating disorders. This was a study done by Ann Becker and some colleagues at Harvard where they went into Fiji, this 2,000 year old culture, no dieting, you know, no body image issues. In fact, in the Fijian culture, you were considered beautiful if you were large. Large women were beautiful. And so what happened is uh, Ann Becker had the opportunity to study the Fijians right as television was being introduced to Fiji. I think her first study was about three months in. Three years later in 1998, after the Fijians had been exposed to television for three years, now approximately 11% of the Fijian girls were vomiting to lose weight. Before television, no eating disorders. After television, 11% of adolescent girls are vomiting. You can't tell me that's not the media having its impact on eating disorders. They went and talked to the girls and they asked them, why? Why did you start losing weight? What was it that made you think that it was important to lose weight after watching television? And basically what they said was that they noticed that the thin women 
in the television shows had an elevated status. They were the ones who were the more revered ones in the culture. I mean, those are the women that are adored and admired and um, looked at by the world. Those are the beautiful women. And you want to be one of those. Every single thing they see, every message they're sent by society says, gaining weight is bad, losing weight is good. I have that image in my head of that being what, you know, a girl like my age was supposed to look like. My fight today is with what's happening with young girls in terms of the promotion of dieting and the promotion of appearance above all else. The more weight I lost, the more praise I got, and the more confident I felt in myself. Boys would ask me to dance at the school dance. And, and when I lost the weight, that's when the boys at school stopped teasing me and started liking me. If you ask young girls today, how does it affect you living in this culture? How does it affect you being influenced by the media, by all of the television ads, the magazine ads, all of what I would call, you know, the propaganda of thinness? Are, are you affected by it? In some ways, that's sort of like asking a fish, what's it like to live in water? You're just being inundated, inundated. It just, I think it just seeps in. It's there in every single aspect. I mean, it's there in like the, the TV, the ads, the news reports. So they'll talk about the latest celebrity who's up or down. I remember reading, you know, interviews with celebrities and um, invariably there was a question in there about their diet and how they kept attracted. Oh, my positive identity was connected to the society positive body shape. You can't be a female in this culture and not think about your body. The more I got into my eating disorder, the more I realized how, how important it was to be thin. You are treating an illness, again, that the culture is helping to substantiate. We have to really seriously think about how we want to praise people. Be careful not to over-appreciate your daughter based on appearance. I mean, it's not like never do that, but make sure you do that for other things, for who she is as a person. It's so easy to say things about appearance. You gotta sit and think about things about who they are as a person and praising them for that. Also talk about role models in society. Expose the propaganda. Don't talk about other people's looks in a disparaging way. Don't talk about your own looks in a disparaging way. Don't make that be more important than who you are. We have to wake up and pay attention to the fact that praising someone over appearance without knowing anything else about what's going on is wrong. It's damaging. Mm -hmm.